I want to start off actually with um, with reading a poem. I came across this. Oh, it's so apropos. The poem is entitled Why? Why? by Jory Graham. It's in the New New Yorker. <laughs> Here we go. Why, you ask me again, why putting your tiny hand on the not yet unsheathed bud on the rhododendron? And I see I need to be the sky. I need to be the soil. There are no words for why that I can find fast enough. Why, you say, at the foot of the cherry's wide blossom fall, is it dead now? Why did it let go? Why tossed out into what appears to be silence? And when I say, let's run, the rain is starting, why are we lost? Why did we have to leave where we just were, where everything is so far behind us now as we go on? I see you think when you reach me again to ask why. When I say, are you coming now? And you say, no, I want to stay. I want to, I want to keep things, I want things to stay. I do not want to come and go away from things. What is this we are entering? Me taking your hand to speed our going as fast as we can in this suddenly hard rain. Your hand not letting go of the rose pebble you found, feeling the first itching of personal luck as you now slowly pocket it thinking you have taken with you a little piece of what you could not leave behind. It is why we went there and why we left there. It is your why. It is your why. We try to hold on like to the rose pebble stick it in our pocket, hoping we can hold on to that moment. Why? Why? To see the comings and goings, that's why. Why? So that we can appreciate the good when it comes and so that we can learn how to hold the not so good when it comes. That's why. Why is not a meditator's question? Someone asked this the other day. Why is not a meditator's question? It's a psychotherapist's question. we're suffering, we suffer, and it, we suffer for unanswerable questions sometimes, unanswerable reasons. So Saturday, we were leaving BCBS. We were all packed. The cats were in their carriers, their little carriers. I had taken the time, gotten everything ready, and we had paced it out. It was a nice, it was a nice, you know, preparation for our, our departure. And here I, I took the last little load out to the car and I stood at the car and I started hurling. I, th I threw up three times outside. I threw up everything that could possibly be in me. I left it all on the ground at BCBS. I was like, I I'm, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Much as I may think I'm going home today or going back to Boston today, uh-uh. That's, that's not what's in store. Why? I don't know, because I didn't feel stressed. Truly, in my heart of hearts, I did not feel stressed. I felt like, okay, uh, you know, we're ready for all of this and whatnot, right? But my body was having none of it. So here we were on Saturday and change of plans, course correction. Course correction. Because Dukkha is here and this is what's asking to be held. And um, so we come back in to our little 600 square foot kuti and I lay down and I spent the day pretty much in a horizontal position and just kind of being with the body and just being with how, you know, how rattled it felt and how scared I was. I was freaked out. You know, truly, I've had like, I've had a run of migraines that have been really quite significant. 
Um, so by the way, tomorrow I'm going to the doctors. <laughs> I, have to, I have to get some new, new meds or something, but we're, I'll be off tomorrow. And gratefully, Jay is coming in. I'm going to go to the doctor. Bill is going to go with me. But you know, these are the course corrections that we have to make when, when unexpected, unexpected, unpleasant visitors arrive. And we do our best, you know, to not lean into it and not get you know, not get overwhelmed by it, which is really for me. I don't want to get overwhelmed and freaked out about what's going on, but this is what's going on. And this isn't normal. And okay, I've got to figure that out. So let me figure, let me go figure that out. And let me take my time and let me recalibrate and not push myself and try to push through, which I would have done years ago, folks. I can do it. I can do it. Believe me, I'm like a strong girl. I'm like, you know, like whatever he can do, I can do. I grew up with two brothers, two older brothers. I can do whatever they can do, <laughs> you know, but is you, you know, as you get older, you come to realize, no, 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 no. There's the will, there's the will of Susan Morgan. And then there's this organism that has its own, its own order of things, its own Dharma. And I'm going to pay attention to this Dharma right now. <laughs> Um, so, you know, these are things that are really, really important. Making these course corrections. And I, and I want to, you know, the, I want to say it's not, it's like the, the sukha part of all of this is actually learning to feel for the ease amidst the disease. Now, a lot of, a lot of the folks who have practiced me, with me for a long time are aware of some of the phrases that I say all the time, because those are the ones that have really stuck with me in my practice. Feel for the ease amidst the dis-ease. So after I threw up everything I possibly could throw up on Saturday and went back in, oh, believe me, believe me, I felt the mattress underneath my body. Uh, and it felt so good. To, to realize that I'm not going anywhere today. I'm just gonna hang out here. I don't have to like try to be on in any other way. I can just try to be with what is really happening. And that's the sukha part folks, right there, right there. You know, Bill brought me in some tea and we, you know, we, we, we sat in the room together and we just kind of talked and just kind of, you know, had the cats around and I'm, I'm, the cats are crawling all over me. Sukha. Sukha. Amidst the dukkha. This is what we're learning. This is what we must learn, all of us in our practice. So why, why did this happen? I don't know. I don't know many possible variables. But that's not a meditator's question. The meditator's, the meditator's dilemma is what's going on right now and how am I relating to what's going on right now? So that's what, a, that's what one does. That is what a meditator does. What is here right now and what is asking to be held? How do I hold what is asking to be held? And how do I appreciate the little ease that's present even amidst the disease because it's always gonna be there. My earlobes were not hurting on Saturday. My big toe was not hurting on Saturday. I can rest my attention there, right? Just like that. What is here? What is asking to be held? What is here? What can we appreciate? What is easy that we can appreciate? This is, this is, this is the task of a meditator. And this is the task for all of us as these, um, as life keeps changing and throwing us curveballs and these bodies keep having their own, their own karma, their own dharma. And we just kindly steward them. All right. That's our job. So thank you for your kind attention.